Hey what is up everyone, I'm Agonix here and welcome back to a brand new video here on the channel. So this is a new Godot tutorial where I'll be teaching you guys how to make working security cameras in Godot. So just before this tutorial starts, I do want to say that as of recording this, it is it is a uh, Christmas Eve. So Merry Christmas to everyone if you do celebrate Christmas or whatever type of holiday you celebrate around this time, uh, so yeah. So yeah, happy holidays and hope you guys all have a good Christmas or whatever else you celebrate around this time of year, and yeah. So anyways, um, now let's get right into the tutorial. So as you can see here, I've got this security camera that I've quickly made up. So what I recommend for your security camera is that you give it like a, a hinge. So here I've got like this uh, Node 3D, which I've called Hinge and it's got these meshes as its child nodes. So as you can see, the head of the camera, these three bits of mesh here, which make up the head of the camera, they are all a child of the hinge, and the hinge is basically like the head of the camera. So as you can see, when I rotate the hinge, this is how the camera will be rotating when it is looking at the player. So yeah. Also, when it comes to adding the hinge to your security camera's head, uh, what I recommend you do, so let's say for example, um, you know, you've just got your meshes right before you actually add your hinge. So in case you don't know uh, how to add a node 3D, what you do is you just go click this plus icon here to add a child node, and then we just search up node 3D, add a node 3D, and then you position it around, you know, around to where you would like your head to rotate from, so where you'd like your camera's head to rotate from. So for me it's from around this position here. So I'm just going to get rid of this node 3D now since I've already got my hinge. And then once you've got your hinge positioned, you just select the uh, the meshes that are part of your head, drag them underneath the hinge, and then boom, your hinge is all connected. And also this security camera won't just be able to work for the player, it'll also be able to work for um, basically uh, you know any sort of uh, AI or character that you want to be spotted by the camera and uh, have the camera look at it. So yeah, this will be good for all of that. Alrighty, so once you have your camera prepared and you've made your camera and made sure that, you know, everything's all set up, what you want to do is with your uh, your parent camera script, I mean your parent camera object I mean, so the parent node in your scene for your security camera, what you want to do is you want to go to where it says script empty and then create a new script. So we're just going to make a new script for our security camera. And then with this uh, folder here, uh, just click on this and make sure that you do save your script into your scripts folder or wherever you want to save it in your project. And then, you know, just uh, go open. And now this is the path to where our script will be saved in our project. And then we can go create and boom. So here's what we're going to do. All right, so first off, we're just going to get rid of the starter stuff here, just so then we can start off with a clean slate. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do a few variables. So the first variable is var and trigger. So this will be used to determine if a player or if an AI or something has walked into the trigger that we will be attaching to this security camera. So by default this will equal to false, but if anything is detected by the security camera then it will be equal to true. And then we're going to have var character. So this variable will be for whatever character the uh, security camera needs to look at. So whenever a character walks into the trigger that will be attached to the camera, what will end up happening is that character will then equal to this uh, variable here, and then the camera will then look at that character. So now that we've got our two variables done there, if there is any other variables I need to add then I will add them later on, but um... Now that we're done there, let's get to doing a bit more uh, functionality. So first off we're going to write func underscore process, so we just want to do a process function. So the process function, in case you don't know, it's uh, it happens every single frame in the script, it basically just processes things every frame. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go if underscore in trigger, I mean if in underscore trigger, so what that means is if uh, if something is in the camera's trigger and character is not equal to null, 
So what null means is nothing, so if the character actually equals to something and doesn't equal to nothing, then uh, here's what will happen. So yeah, so if a character is in the camera's trigger and the character uh, equals to something, so it doesn't equal to nothing, then what will happen is we will go dollar sign hinge. So the reason as to why we're using dollar sign is because this allows us to simply access the uh, child hinge node from the object that our script is attached to. So because our script is attached to the security camera node, the child node is the hinge, so we can just simply access it in the script by using a dollar sign out the front of the name of the node. And then what we can do here is we can go dot look at. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the hinge look at an object, and then we're going to write character dot global underscore transform dot origin. So what this is doing is this is basically uh, getting our security camera's uh, hinge, it, the head of the security camera, to look at the character. So that is pretty much the basic scripting needed for the security camera itself. But now we need to actually make a trigger for our security camera. So let me show you guys what we're going to do with that. All right, so now that we've got our security camera pretty much done, what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a new scene. So you want to press the plus icon here to create a new scene. And then we're going to go 3D scene. And then I'm just going to change the name of this node here to camera trigger. So this scene is going to be for the trigger for our camera. And I'm just going to right click on this node here and I'm going to change the type of it to an area 3D. There we go. And then we're going to right click, go add child node, going to add a collision shape 3D. And you can make the collision shape whatever you want, wherever you want it to be a sphere or a box. Uh, I'm going to be doing a, I think probably, mm, we'll go with a box for now. But you know, you can use a sphere or anything else if you want to. So here's my uh, camera trigger. So now that we've got our camera trigger, let's now actually um, uh, just save, make sure you do save your scenes by the way as you're working on them, press Control S to save them, save them into a scenes folder or something, just so then in case your project crashes, then you know, got all your progress still. So anyways, um, now that you got camera trigger, what we want to do is we want to create a new script. So go down to where it says script empty on the parent node of your scene, go new script. So this is going to be for the camera trigger, just going to save it into my scripts folder, boom, load. I just realized that when naming the script camera trigger, it already brought up a script from a, another tutorial of mine. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to um, uh, just call the trigger something else. I'll just call it camera trigger 2, then we'll save it into my scripts folder. And there we go, create, and boom, now we have a new script. So what we're going to do now uh, is we're going to just get rid of this stuff here. Boom. And now what we're going to do is we're going to write a completely new function. So we're going to write func enter underscore trigger and then in the parentheses you want to write body. So what body is going to be is this is going to be the object that enters the trigger. And then we're going to write if body is character body 3D. So what we're checking for here is if the character that walks into the in, that walks into the trigger is a character body 3d type then what will happen is the following so since we're going to be making this camera trigger a child of the security camera uh, in our level scene what we're going to do here is we're going to do get underscore parent dot character equals to body so what we're doing here is uh, we're grabbing the uh, parent object, which will be our security camera. And since our security camera has a variable called character, what character will be doing is that will then equally is that will then be equal to body. So yeah, so the body is the character that enters the trigger, and if the uh, body is a character body 3D, then what will happen is character will then equal to body. And then what else we need to do here is we then need to do get underscore parent dot in underscore trigger equals true since now the player is uh, or you know whatever character has walked into the trigger is now inside of the trigger and the security camera can now look at them. So what we're going to do now is we are going to copy this function here and then we're just going to paste it underneath, call it exit trigger instead of enter trigger, 
and then what we're going to do here is we're going to do get underscore parent dot character equals to null and then in trigger equals to false <clears throat> and there we go so now that we've got our two functions here done what we need to do is we now need to connect the signals up so what we need to do for that is you just need to make sure that you have your area 3d selected then uh, in your inspector menu here you just want to switch over to the node tab then where it says body entered just double click on this and then you want to enter in the name of your uh, function that you want to be used for entering the trigger so for me my function is called enter trigger so I'm entering that here into the receiver method connect and boom and then you want to do the same thing for the body exited signal here call this exit underscore trigger and boom connect and there we go so now our camera trigger should be done so now here's what we're going to do alrighty so what you want to do now is you want to go back over to your level scene so whatever your level scene is this is mine that I use for a majority of my tutorials so what we're going to do is I'm going to now instantiate a child scene so I'm just going to click this icon here and I'm going to search up security camera so then I can add my security camera into the scene and boom so now here is my security camera it is a bit big but we can make it smaller of course I will quickly do that and boom there we go so I do want to have somewhere for this security camera to be held up of course so um, I'm going to add a little thingy majiggy for the security camera to hold on to alright so this is where our security camera is going to be it's just going to be held up here alright so now what we're going to do is we are now going to right click on our security camera go add we're going to instantiate a child scene onto it and what we're going to do is we're going to search up camera trigger and boom so now we have our camera trigger added so with your camera trigger basically what you want to do with this is you basically want to extend it out so then it is basically taking up the area of which you want your camera to be looking at the uh, the characters from so with me I'm just gonna do mine to represent this small area here so then if the player is within this small area around this vicinity then what will end up happening is you know the camera will look at the player just extend it up there we go and boom so now as you guys can see my camera trigger is all set up and it is a child of my security camera so now that we're all done there how about we actually test it all out and see if it all works well Alright guys, so I just gave it a bit of a test before, and I realized that I messed up somewhere with my security camera. So, if you go to your, um, your hinge, right, and then you set this little icon here to use local space, uh, what you will notice is that, uh, your, you know, you'll have your, uh, X, Y, and Z axis, your arrows, right? Well, what you want to make sure of is that your blue arrow is pointing backwards of the front of your camera head. So, as you can see here, currently the red arrow is facing forwards and we do not want that. So, if your blue arrow is not facing backwards, here's what you want to do. So, move out the meshes from underneath your node. And then with your hinge node, you just then want to rotate it until your uh, blue arrow is facing backwards and then boom. So, once you do that, you can just simply add your meshes as children of the hinge again, and now everything should be fine. So now let's actually go test out the security camera and see if everything works. And boom, as you can see, the security camera is now looking at me. So yeah, it all works perfectly. The security camera is currently looking at me right now. And then when I move out of the trigger, it no longer looks at me. But then if I move back into the trigger, it looks at me again. So yeah.
So that there guys is pretty much how you do a basic security camera in Godot. And again, this is, doesn't just work for your camera looking at your player. This also works for other characters as well, as long as they are character body 3Ds. If you want to change it, so then, um, you know, like, let's say for example you don't use character body 3Ds for your characters and you instead use rigid body 3Ds or something else, then all you need to do in the script is just change up character body 3D to rigid body 3D or something like that. That's all you need to do. So yeah, it's very simple, and uh, feel free to make any modifications to the script that you want, and yeah. Anyways guys, that's the end of this video, hopefully you all did enjoy and learn something from it, and I'll see you all next time, bye bye.